So now in this video we're going to look at this circuit that I have on the board. There is the schematic. The main thing is we're using the 7406, 74 LS06. I don't think there is a 74HC06, the high speed CMOS. But in any case, right now we have a high input and this is coming from one power supply. The uh, 5 volt power supply right there. The breadboard supply is powering the integrated circuit. The load, the LED is being powered by this power supply here set to 20 volts so we have a load with a higher voltage than the power supply of the integrated circuit you only want a 5 volt power supply really with this integrated circuit that's what's recommended and there's not much wiggle room with that so we got a 5 volt power supply we'll get to that coming up the main thing is we got a high signal coming in it's actually a low signal coming out well zoom in really quick you can see this resistor is to the positive rail so it is low whereas the uh, switch here we have a resistor to positive there and that's going to the input we can't really see it there we go that's not too bad but in case let's give a low signal to the input now the LED is off so the reason why it's off is because actually we just cut off a path there's no way for a current to go it just cut off uh, completely so now it's low because we got a current path there from positive. Make sure you put the LED in the right way. Long lead the anode to positive, short lead to the uh, output there. And then when we hit this button, basically it's just like an open switch right now. But we consider that a high output because we have a positive voltage coming that way. So this side of the LED is actually high right now where the output is. It has a voltage across it. So now here's the pin layout for the integrated circuit, the uh, 7406, and this is how I've seen all the hex inverters so far, if there's six inverters in a 14 pin integrated circuit like this. So I grabbed it from this kit here, you can see the part number right there, 74LS06. I have a kit like this for the high speed CMOS too. Not every single number though lines up, but that number to the right there tells you what circuitry is on it's a 7400 series but that tells you the circuitry there and then this tells you what kind of transistors are being used and stuff so this is low power shocky HC is high speed CMOS now we have to power this so we got the uh, VCC positive side of the supply there and ground there if you look at the data sheet really you should use 5 volts for the most part so there's a little bit of flexibility but it's all really close to 5 volts. It's pretty clear that the low power shot key should be 5 volts. So we have the 5 volt power supply there. I turned off both power supplies before I started taking apart the circuitry. And so what we're going to do for the VCC, take this jumper here and put it up there to VCC right there. So now we have the negative supply at that bottom, pin number 7 down there, and the positive with the 5 volt. Make sure it's 5 volt. The load though, as we saw, can be a higher voltage, 20 volts. We need to tie together their grounds. So that is what that jumper is right there. Ground is a common point for all of the circuitry, even if you have more than one power supply. So that's uh, pretty useful. So now next to the uh, VCC pin there, you can see a little jumper right there. And we want to connect together all of the inputs to the positive rail so it's not part of the uh, circuit working remember the input is above the low or above the output so we got power there input output input output and then we were using this input and that output for our circuitry and so I'm gonna add jumpers to the inputs over there and so now all of the inputs are tied to the positive rail right there and to be honest we may not even need to do this for the low power shot key the uh, bipolar junction transistor version of this maybe it's just the CMOS versions that we need to but uh, it shouldn't hurt anything to do this so I'm going to do this now until I investigate that a little more so now let's get to the rest of the circuit so we have it powered now once I turn the power on and we got the output there we're gonna use the bottom pin right there and then for the input the second pin up 
for the uh, integrated circuit right there. That's the only one we're going to use for this video. There's a little star there. That indicates that it's an open collector. If it's a CMOS integrated circuit, then it's an open drain. There's also a, a diamond symbol with a line underneath it that I see to indicate that is an open collector or an open drain. But here you can see at the 5 volt supply, we have a 10 kilo ohm. Zag value doesn't really matter too much. It should be higher value though. 10 kilo ohm to the input. So that second pin down. And then also to the input is going to be a switch which goes to ground. So that is pretty straightforward. So we got to do that from the 5 volt supply right there. That is 5 volts. I already have the resistor right here going to the switch. The switch is going to ground. This little jumper is just a tap right there. And so that's it for the input. Pretty straightforward. Now the output we're going to power it with the 20 volt supply. I have this set to 20 volts and I limited current to 20 milliamps of current just in case I uh, miswire or something. And uh, so that's the maximum for this circuit because we're using a 3 kilo ohm resistor there. The uh, data sheet for the uh, 74LS06, the Texas Instrument one, says it can handle up to 30 volts. But we're going to keep it at 20. And that's maximum 30 volts. So you might not want to do that anyways. But in case, we're going from the positive supply. So for the 20 volt, there's the alligator clips bringing it. They're plugged into the rail. We're going to take a resistor and an LED. So the LED, as you can see here, is at the output. That is the cathode. And normally I work positive up down towards negative. Cathode is the short lead. But in this case, I'm going to put the uh, short lead, the cathode, up one. And uh, the long lead, the anode, down one right there. And we're going to grab the 3 kilo ohm resistor. Let me make sure, yep, orange. Orange for 3. And uh, as long as you only have a few values on the board, usually you can tell the value of a resistor just by looking at one color. So 3000, it's the only one that starts with 3. So we have that, so positive, going to the LED. So now let's first turn on the integrated circuit. I don't know if you really need to, but I think that may be safer for that to be on before you turn the, uh, the load on. So it's 20 volts now, I'll hit the button, that set the output on. You can see the LED is on. So again, it comes from positive, the uh, resistor and the LED. So right now the output is low. It's connected to ground. And now we consider this high because there's a voltage built up at the output. But really, it just turned off. It cut the path to ground. So it's just basically off. But we have this resistor to the positive rail. Right there. So now we have a positive input and then a negative ground right there. As you can see there, we hit the button and now we have a low. There's a direct connection to ground to the input. So the output for the integrated circuit is considered high right now and it's off. So in any case, hope that all made sense. So now to wrap this up, we don't need to use 20 volts. We can use any volts within limits and I limited to 20 volts and a 3 kilo ohm resistor to handle the 20 volts but there we got a lower voltage 5 volts and we could use a lower value resistor the LED would be brighter and more current would flow through it no problem also we don't have to use a separate power supply we could use the same power supply make sure though if I use a higher voltage open collector generally means you can use another power supply but if it's going to be a higher voltage, it has to be a specially made. So the 06 is specially made to handle a higher voltage. Not all open collector, open drains can handle a higher voltage. Make sure you check the uh, data sheet before you just look at the open collector and start applying a higher voltage. But in case, we don't have to use the voltage from that second supply. I can go up here, go to this jumper and then make sure I go down to the uh, far end of the LED and there you can see it's on. It will work exactly the same with one power supply. Of course it'll be the same voltage since it's the power supply powering the integrated circuit it should really be 5 volts which we have right now. So in any case that's it for this video. 
Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm new to studying these integrated circuits. It's kind of confusing at first, so hopefully uh, these videos will help. So make sure you check out one of these other videos and click subscribe and the bell. And I will see you in the next video.